Hello, my name is Asta Janusdottir. I'm a nephrologist in Stockholm, Sweden, and one of the Klomkon Fellows of the class 2020-21. Today, I'm going to present uh, topics that were discussed in one of our workshops. The topic of the workshop was membranous nephropathy. And firstly, I'm going to talk briefly about the pathophysiology behind nephrotic syndrome, which is a common a presentation for these patients. And then very briefly to discuss the need for kidney biopsy in the diagnosis of a membranous nephropathy. And then lastly, how it is possible to distinguish between primary and secondary forms. So firstly, just uh, to go through the nephrotic syndrome criteria, they consist of proteinuria more than 3.5 grams per day in adults, hypoalbuminemia, edema, and hyperlipidemia. The proteinuria is believed to be due to breakdown in the permeability selectivity barrier of the glomerocapillary wall. Uh, and the glomerular filtration barrier consists of the podocyte slit diaphragm, the glomerular basement membrane, and the fenestrated endothelium. The hypoalbuminemia is partly uh, believed to be due to this increased urinary loss of albumin, but also due to increased kidney catabolism. And we know that these patients that develop nephrotic syndrome and not just nephrotic veins, proteinuria, have insufficient hepatic albumin synthesis, although uh, the cause and the mechanism is uh, unclear. Hyperlipidemia is, uh, the pathophysiology there is complex and only partly understood. We know that these patients have high IGL, VLDL, and LDL, and they have no uh, can have normal or decreased HDL and high triglycerides. The main underlying mechanism of the pathogenesis is believed to be decreased metabolism with decreased hepatic lipase activity, impaired VTL clearance and decreased function and expression of the lipoprotein lipase in peripheral tissues and endothelium and increased levels of PCS-CK9 that degrades the LDL receptor. Another causative factor is increased hepatic biosynthesis of lipoprotein caused by, probably caused by the low oncotic pressure. There are two main theories uh, for the formation of edema in these patients. The ontophil theory state there's a consequence of low plasma oncotic pressure secondary to the hypoalbuminemia. Uh, this makes a shift of the intravascular to interstitial volume and edema formation. The Oberfield theory holds that the edema formation is a consequence of sodium retention due to a tubular distal defect mediated by increased uh, sodium potassium ATPase and ENAC activation. The overfill mechanism is now believed to be the causative mechanism in most cases of nephrotic syndrome. As we know that the intravascular volume is normal or even increased in most patients with the syndrome. Also, hypercoagulability is not one of the criteria, well, is not dated in the criteria. It's a common complication in nephrotic syndrome. And it and the pathophysiology is not fully understood, but believed to be multifactorial. Uh, genetic background and environmental factors such as inflammation, medications such as diuretic and immobilization can play a role. But we know that the hemostatic is also deranged. There is increased synthesis rate of procoagulation proteins in the liver 
and increased urinary loss of coagulase and regulatory protein. And there is evidence also for increased thrombocyte activation um, that can increase the arterial thrombose risk. So to the next topic, and that was if kidney biopsy is always needed for diagnosis of membranous nephropathy. So this is from a study uh, presented by one of our colleagues, uh, which is published in Kidney International in 2019. They included 132 PLO2 positive, PLO2R positive uh, patients, uh, where 97 patients were negative, had a neg negative workup for secondary causes. 60 of those patients had a VG for over 60 and 37 under 60. In only in two patients uh, in with a higher GFR group had additional findings on biopsy. In both these cases, it did not change the uh, management. Uh, however, in the patients with the lower GFR, uh, EGFR, there were five patients that had additional findings on biopsy, and in some of these patients, uh, that led to change in the management decisions. So this, and there are some other studies that show similar finding suggests that uh, the diagnosis can be made without kidney bi biopsy in PLA2R positive patients, if, especially if the kidney function is normal. So is it possible to distinguish between primary and secondary forms of membranous nephropathy? Um, this is adapted from one of the slides of my colleagues. Prime factors to suggest primary membranous nephropathy can be positive PLA2R antibodies in serum and immunofluorescence, a granular pattern of EGG4 more than EGG1, EGG3, and the positive PLA2R staining. Factors that can suggest secondary causes like, for example, lupus nephritis, or um, no, besides the sub epithelial deposits in a membranous nephropathy, uh, subendothelial deposits, mesangial deposits, and hypercellularity. On the immunofluorescence, you can see a full house that suggests lupus nephritis and a dominance of EGG3 or EGG1 rather than EGG4, like commonly seen in the primary form. Exotocin 1 and exotocin 2 um, have been associated with lupus nephritis, and now one, one of uh, the new biomarkers has been associated with malignancy. And then the electromicroscopy, the findings of fingerprint deposits and tubular reticular inclusion suggest secondary causes like lupus nephritis. So that was all. Thank you so much.